gosh, how, uh, how very daunting to follow all of that. That was amazing. All of you were, very, were, were amazing, actually, very inspirational. Uh, so I do feel quite daunted, actually, that I've got to kind of top, uh, top well, sort of t you know, put, put a top on all, of, all, of, all, the, all those amazing presentations that you guys have just been through. Uh, but I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Um, uh, what did, what did uh, Mr. Fuller Love say at the beginning? This was about uh, trying to come and talk about your passions. And I am very um, passionate about One Direction? No. Um, <laughs> I am very passionate about technology and very passionate about what technology uh, has done for me in terms of my career. Uh, and so I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what I've learned through my, through my time in that, in that, in that industry. Uh, and I've called my, 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 little, uh, my little presentation rather grandly uh, an accidental entrepreneur. And you'll sort of see as I, as I explain kind of how I've, uh, how I've gone through my career, that actually it was, it was a bit of an accident that I ended up doing what I do. Um, but a very happy one, actually, I'm very pleased to say. And uh, I've, I've uh, in, in good clickbait style, I've gone four lessons from a career in startups. And if nothing else, that'll be a nice structure for you to follow. So when you get to point four, you'll know you're near the end. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's what I'm going to talk about. And I sort of, sort of structured it a little bit thinking as people often do in these kind of environments, about my 16, 17, 18-year-old self and what lessons do, uh, would, would I tell that, that 16, 17, 18-year-old if I were able to speak to them? But anyway, a little, a little bit about me. So these are, the, these are the companies that I've worked at, or at least some of them. I've probably worked at a few more than this. Uh, and um, I, the, um, I, uh, Iris was absolutely right. I have been doing this a very long time. And the, the first one up there is a company called Razorfish. Uh, that, uh, this, so this is, this is ancient history to all you guys, but it, it was, uh, I started my career in the dot-com boom uh, back in the late 90s or, or, or mid-90s. Uh, I then worked for a company called Pogo, which I'll talk about in a bit, uh, then a company called Knowledge Pool, a company called Semaphone, which I helped found, uh, and I now work for a company called Squared Up, uh, which, uh, for those of you who care, is an amazing d dashboarding tool that helps uh, IT teams see what's going on in their, in their networks. Um, three out of those five were great, you, know, you, you might say were great successes and kind of everybody who was involved did really well out of it and it was a great, great result. Uh, one of them was a catastrophic failure and I'll talk about that. Uh, and obviously one of them's still going and we, we're hoping that Squared Up's gonna be, uh, gonna be the former rather than the latter. Uh, I have been fortunate enough in my career to kind of do well enough that I can actually choose, choose what I do with my time a little bit these days. And uh, so these are some of the organizations that I support from a charitable point of view, and I, and I give my time and my money to these things, uh, and I always like to, to give them a bit, of a bit of a shout out whenever I do any kind of uh, presentations or public speaking. First one is a fantastic charity that my best friend uh, started called the Legacy of War Foundation. Uh, he had the misfortune of treading on an IED uh, when he was uh, in Afghanistan, taking some pictures, and ever since he's been very, very passionate about helping people in communities who've been affected by, uh, by war. And he's doing some great work at the moment in Rwanda and doing some amazing work in Ukraine. Uh, second one there is a completely different end of the spectrum. It's a very simple thing that we do each year just to try and help care leavers who've never experienced a good Christmas before and we put on an amazing Christmas dinner to try and help care leavers experience a little bit about what normal life is like for the rest of us in terms of families when we grow up. It's a great charity started by a fantastic poet called Lem Sise. Totally inspirational story. If you ever get a chance to read his book, strongly recommend it. Uh, and then I'm very proud to be a member of the Henry Smith Club and, and to support the foundation here at, uh, at the school. So that's a bit about me. Uh, as I said, the, uh, it's sort of obligatory, I think, at these things to show a picture of yourself when you're 17, 18. So sort of looking back at what I was like uh, when, I was, when I was sort of sort of your age. Uh, and I'm that one there. And actually, the first lesson for free, this is lesson zero, is don't, don't ever put on a silly pair of spectacles that aren't yours for the school photograph because your, your housemaster will be very disappointed in you, Tim. And uh, you'll end up being, uh, being what was called gated at my school for, uh, for a weekend, which meant I wasn't allowed to do anything fun. Uh, but yeah, so don't do that. But that was me at the age of, uh, age of 17 in all my wonderful white male middle class privilege. And, uh, and, and actually, that's the first lesson that I wanted to sort of try and share, is uh, just recognize kind of how lucky you are. This is sort of me talking to my 17-year-old self, and I'd actually say the same thing to you guys here. And I don't mean this in a sort of patronizing, paternal, grown-up-y way. Oh, you should be very grateful for all the, all the things that you've got uh, as, as young people. I actually mean that you should just be so, so, uh, you should recognize just how lucky you are to be alive now 
in a world, in a time when there's so much opportunity and so much technology is, is changing the way that we all live. There's information available to you guys that we never had access to. Uh, also, you live in a, you've, you've sort of been brought up in this amazing country where you can actually, you can, despite all the things that, uh, that, 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 that obviously, you know, we, 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 we do worry about a lot, but you can pretty much do anything you want in this country. So it's an amazing place to be brought up, an amazing place to, to an amazing time to be alive. Uh, and I say that just because if anybody should be brave enough to take a few risks in their careers, it's actually you guys here because you've got this amazing foundation that this place has given you but also that your parents and, and everything else about your lives and, and the country that we live in, you've got that amazing foundation that should, if anybody can be brave and can take a few risks with their career, it's you guys. Uh, and also it, it acts as an amazing safety net so that actually it is there that if anything were to go wrong, uh, you've got that amazing safety net to fall back on. And so I would, I would sort of, lesson one is recognize how lucky you are, but recognize what that can enable you to do, which is to be brave and take a few risks. The second lesson is to be open to opportunity. And this is where the sort of accidental entrepreneurial bit comes in, in that uh, when I left university, I was freshly armed with my, my law degree and uh, was thinking, oh, what do I do with my time? Shall I go off and, you know, was looking at, at applying to various solicitors and, and thinking about uh, what, I might, what I might do. And I, I ended up doing, uh, doing this for a living. And, 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 I, and I don't mean, oh, I was in marketing and I was doing some crazy kind of, I was the designer of these things. I actually was the guy going around putting these on the floor in supermarkets. <laughs> oh, my parents were so proud. Um, but somehow, for some reason, I got kind of roped it. I, I sort of took a little job when I, was, when I was at university just to earn a little bit of extra money. And I started doing some, some stuff for a couple of crazy guys, a, a couple of brothers who were just so much fun. So inspirational, they thought this was going to be the next big thing and they were going to, they were going to uh, make their fortunes out of it. And it was just such a fun place to be and such a great environment that when they said to me, hey, look, you know, what are you doing? Do you want to come and, uh, you know, come, and, come and work for us? I was like, yeah, why not? You know, this looks like more fun than, what I, than going off and being a solicitor. And so, uh, so I, that's what I ended up doing for a bit. And um, clearly nothing to do with technology at all. Uh, but because I took that opportunity and started working for these guys, um, I, uh, I ended up meeting the, the, uh, a guy who, who actually then did introduce me to uh, that company I talked about earlier, Razorfish. He was the one who said, oh, hey, Tim, you know, uh, do you want to come and kind of come and work for me at, at this tech company that I'm doing and we're starting it all up? And I was like, well, yeah, okay, go on, let's do that. And, uh, and so it's just to sort of encourage you to, you know, take the, sometimes to say yes to things that perhaps aren't the obvious, uh, take the path less less well-trodden, because actually sometimes it leads to, leads, to, leads to some exciting places and can take you to, to places that are, that, are, that are more fun or more interesting. So that was lesson two. Lesson three is celebrate failure as much as success. And here's, here's where the, uh, the glorious failure in my, in my career comes in, which is, is this thing, which I, actually, I, actually, I, I still have one, which is, is called a pogo. And I'm very happy to, if you guys want, I don't know if anyone wants to do sort of share. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. It never did really at the time. But... Um, it, uh, it, uh, it was, it was a, a handheld device, uh, and it had, uh, it had a color screen. I, I thought I'd put this picture up, just so you can see that you know, the sort of icons, and you could press things, and it was all sort of driven to give you access to the internet. Uh, and uh, and, and you know, we thought this was going to, we thought this was an amazing idea. It was going to do really, really well. Um, and just to sort of highlight the, the date there on the BBC website, 2002. Does anyone know when the iPhone was released in the UK? 2008, yeah, it was 2007, 2008. The iPad was 2010. So we, we were doing this in 2002. We were a crazy bunch of kids who just didn't have a clue what we were doing, really. But we thought we were some techies. We thought it was a great, great idea to try and put the internet in your pocket. And we came up with something very, very similar uh, to an iPhone. And, um, but, uh, but it didn't work out, sadly. Uh, it was all a bit too complex, and uh, you needed an, an awful lot more money than we had to make it work. Uh, but actually, the, the lesson in all of it was to really uh, celebrate the failure of it, actually, in a way. And I know that sounds crazy, but uh, we, uh, we learned so much from doing this as a group of people. And we learned so much about how, well, for me personally, it was, it was the, the importance of execution in these things. You can have the greatest idea... You know, this, this, the idea behind this, if, you'd, if we'd written out what we were going to do, you would think we were describing the iPhone. It was that similar to what Steve Jobs and the guys at Apple came up with. 
but so you can have the best idea in the world, but if you can't execute on it, then it really isn't going to do anything for you. So we learned the importance of execution. Uh, lesson number four, it's not all about, and this is quite a techie one, so I'm, I, I apologize for this, but, it, but there, is, there is a point to it. It's not all about having amazing engineers. Uh, and I guess if I was, I was sort of thinking about how I might try and inspire some of you young people to, to think about a career in tech. And uh, quite often people think tech is, is computer science. It's about uh, uh, sort of en you know, software engineers beavering away at their screens. And, and, it, and it, it really is a lot more than that. There is, you know, I'm not particularly technical uh, as, a, as, a, as an individual. I mean, I, I know a lot about it now because I've worked with a lot of great people who love technology and love coding and love building things. But there are so many people who I work with a, on a daily basis who are in marketing and in design and in graphic design and in sales and in finance and in back office stuff. And actually, it's, it's so important, actually, that if you're going to make any of these great ideas work in a startup environment, you need a team of people to do it. And uh, every single one of those companies that I talked about, every single place I've ever worked, uh, it's been the team that's either helped it, that's effectively made it succeed. And even at Pogo, where, where it, didn't, it didn't work out so well, uh, we had an amazing team of people there uh, who, uh, who, who actually, a lot of whom went on to, to do great things. But anyway, so yeah, so teamwork's important. It obviously does help to have some, if you're going to be in tech and you're going to do a tech startup, it obviously does help to have some great engineers as well. And I have been very lucky uh, in my career to work with some really great engineers, uh, not least of which is the guy I'm working with now at Squared Up, uh, a chap called Rich, who really, really understands how to, uh, the, the problem of monitoring systems, complex systems out there. And if you can find someone like that, Who's, an, who's, a, who's, a, who's a domain expert in things, uh, they, uh, they, they, make, they, make, they make starting a business an awful lot easier. So that was lesson number four. And then so to finish, Ray, I hear you say, it's finishing. Uh, a quick, this is a quick fire list of reasons why you should consider a career in technology. And it's not an exhaustive list at all. This is purely personal. Uh, the first is that you can travel. You get to see the world. These places, all in blue, are the places that I've been. And I'm not particularly sort of keen to put my hand up and say, hey, let's, I, you know, I want to do that trip. I could have been to loads more in my career. I had opportunities to go to India and Japan and China and, you know, got better things to do, whatever. Um, so I didn't do it. But I still managed to get all those, all those cool places and had an amazing time. So there's, there's a reason. You can travel. Uh, secondly, you can make an awful lot of money out of technology if that's what floats your boat. Uh, six out of the top. 10 richest people in the world at the moment made their fortune from technology. But that really is a crap list because they're all men and they're all old. So I thought I'd give you 10 amazing women at the top in tech. These are awesome women who are doing great things today at some of these amazingly big companies. And these guys are all super successful too. But so you can make a lot of money and you can have a, a great career at it. You can have a lot of fun and you meet some amazing people. So I've worked with some of the most passionate, most driven, most, uh, most, most entertaining people that, uh, that, that certainly I've ever met in my life at the companies I've worked at. And uh, we, all, we actually always quite like colorful things in, in, the, in, the, tech, in the startup world. A lot of, lot of colorful t-shirts that, that you get given whenever you do startups. But yeah, some amazing people. It's a diverse, uh, diverse community of people from all sorts of backgrounds who come together and build these amazing things. And I absolutely love it. Very passionate about working with the, the people we do. The, the, the stuff that excites me most, actually, is when somebody comes into the, the sort of industry not really sure about kind of whether it's right for them or it's the career that they want to want to follow. Uh, and, you know, they come as an apprentice or they come as a, a, a graduate, a first, it's their first job. And uh, they stay forever because they love it. And it's such a, such a great industry to be in. Uh, so you can have a lot of fun. You can meet great people. Uh, but this is, this, is, this is the point I really, really want you to take away if you're thinking about, uh, you know, what, what, was that, what was that weird guy going on about in terms of his career in tech and what's, what he learned? It's this, and I apologize for it being a very sort of grainy stock, stock image that I found on the internet. But it's the, it's, the, it's the power of gearing and leverage that technology really gives you. And tech is just an amazing industry to be in because really small teams, two, three, four, five people, can achieve great things. You can, you can change things. You can really build, you can connect people all over the world through, through the power of, of tech this, uh, today. And so if there's one thing I'd want you to remember about, about tech and, and why I'm so passionate about it, it's this. It's this picture here because it's about that gearing and that leverage that tech gives you. And then I, was, I, I wasn't sure that I'd put this one in, actually, because I thought, 
I, I, I like to sort of end on a, you know, uh, this, is, this, is, this is what I sort of teach, teach everybody I work with to, to be really, really, really rigorous intellectually with your, uh, with, with your assumptions and with your opinions. It's one of the most important things when you're, uh, when you're, when you're starting a business to be really, really careful uh, about, uh, um, uh, to, to, be, to be really clear about why you're doing things and to, for everything to be evidence-based. And I make no apologies for stealing this for a fantastic comedian called Tim Minchin who, uh, if, you've, if you've not come across his, uh, this speech that he gave to, uh, to a graduating class at, uh, at his university, UWA, you should check it out, because he gives nine very, very, very cool uh, things that you should, be, you should be sort of thinking about when you're, uh, when, when you're young and sort of about to take on the world. But, uh, but yeah, I wasn't sure whether to include this, because I thought, well, you know, I'll do something very, uh, very sort of, um, uh, hopefully, inspirational, and say, yes, you guys have got to, got, to, got to be rigorous intellectually in your opinions. But actually, I realized, having listened to you all tonight, that you don't need me to tell, that, tell you that, actually, because you already have shown that in everything. All the presentations that you did were so amazing, and you've obviously given it an awful lot of thought. Uh, and so, you know, you don't need me to say that. But there it is anyway. So that was it. So thank you very much. Thank you to everyone for organizing it. I've broken it.